Watching, here I come. Hello, sports fans, sports collectors, and all hobbyists. Welcome to the Card King Sports and Variety Show. I'm your host, the Catman, Brian Cataquit, a.k.a. the Card King. We are live on ABC's KMET 1490AM.com. Your number one spot right here for news and talk on the West Coast. You can also catch my show live on Alexa by saying, Alexa, play KMET Radio for your listening pleasure. We are awaiting a phone call from a guest, so until he calls in, we could begin the program. And uh, there was an article last week, and the website is called Fansided, an article written by a Mike Calacion regarding the most valuable Mets baseball card. And which one is it? Which one is the Mets' holy grail? And if you listen to this show, I mentioned this about a few months ago. Uh, I, I did speak about the most valuable Met uh, baseball card, and which is considered the uh, Nolan Ryan rookie card from 1968. And the article speaks about the uh, two most valuable Met cards for Met fans listening to this program. The two most valuable Met baseball card in its franchise history, I would say, is the 67 Seaver rookie, the 67 top Seaver rookie, and the 68 Ryan rookie. So the article does mention that the 68 tops Nolan Ryan is the Holy Grail Met card, and it's the most valuable Met card to invest in, the most popular Met card to invest in. And uh, if we look at the history of the 68 tops Met Nolan Ryan rookie card. Now, that card is very interesting. It's very popular, you know, for a couple of reasons. You know, Nolan Ryan is a fantastic pitcher, great superstar pitcher. And also the 68 Tops baseball rookie card of Nolan Ryan also features two players on one card, which is Ryan and the popular Jerry Kuzman. We all know the 69 Mets won the World uh, series, the world champs, and Kuzman was another popular Met pitcher. So it's a great card to invest in, the 68 Met rookie card of Nolan Ryan in any condition. And I mentioned that here before this article came out about a couple of months ago. Also, the SNY television station uh, came to my uh, uh, office about 10, 11 years ago. They did a feature on me, the Card King, and uh, also on that program about 11, 12 years ago, I believe. You can still see it online. I also mentioned back then that the 68 Tops Nolan Ryan rookie card was the holy grail, was the most popular Met card to invest in, and that card always you know, skyrockets in price, never goes down in value. So if we go through the history of uh, Nolan Ryan, since we're on the topics, if we go through the history of 1968 tops Nolan Ryan, Jerry Kuzman card that have sold in auctions, we can go back and, you know, and just go through some of these uh prices that the, this card really sold for through the years. So we could begin most recently. Um, there was a, an auction February 25th, 2020, in which uh, there was a graded nine, a authenticated graded Ryan rookie graded nine, which is mint condition, which sold at auction for $25,200. That was on a February 25th auction. It sold for $25,200. Uh, now, if we go down to an auction that sold, that actually took place February 13, and which also offered a Nolan Ryan card, which sold, a Nolan Ryan rookie card from 68, which sold in February 13th, 2020. Nolan Ryan 68 Tops rookie card graded nine sold for $25,700. So um, those two most recent sales on high grade Nolan Ryan cards uh, really puts the estimated value if you find a high grade, you know, mint condition 68 Tops Nolan Ryan card and get the card graded, you can fetch, you can fetch and gross these two uh, quote prices that I mentioned. The card sells in the twenty-five thousand plus dollar range. The twenty-five thousand plus dollar range. Now, Nolan Ryan cards. I've mentioned it here before. Also, in any year, his sixty-nine, another popular card because you know, of course, the Mets won the World Series that year. So, his sixty-nine card 
is also another popular card. Also, his 72 card, his 72 tops rookie card, not his rookie card, 72 tops baseball card is also a popular Ryan card to invest in because it's the psychedelic uh, year that tops really uh, produce their baseball cards. They really produce the 72 tops baseball cards in a psychedelic, psychedelic fashion. So um, those are two, uh, you know, three good years to invest in. 68 tops, of course, his rookie year, as I just mentioned. If you can't afford that card, you want to go after his 69 card, the year the Mets won, which is also a popular card. And if we go through some of the uh, 69 tops, Ryan baseball cards that have sold in auction. So let's 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 take a look at some of his 69 uh, prices that grossed in auction for a 69 Ryan card. Uh, of course, you're not going to reach the uh, value of the 68 tops rookie card, but his 69 tops Ryan card, again, a popular card. If you find one in nice condition, a mint condition 69 Ryan card did gross for about $2,500 most recently in an online sale. And an online sale, a 69 Tops Ryan card. Now, of course, if you're collecting the uh, late 60 cards, and let's say you're a Met fan, 69 Tops is a very popular year for Mets. You know, Met fans, Met collectors, also the 73 year, the 73 Tops year, also the Mets made it to the uh, World Series. And that's also a nice investment. Uh, you know, if you find 1973 Met cards in uh, high grade, like Cleon Jones, even Yogi Berra from 1973. Yogi Berra was on the Team 73, which is another popular seller. Uh, Cleon Jones, 73. Nolan Ryan, 73. Tom Seaver, 73 tops. These are all popular cards to invest in, to look after. And, you know, with the uh, summer soon approaching, we have the National uh, Sports Collectors Convention. And you can find out where the uh, National Sports Collectors Convention is being held this summer. And that, that'll be taking place in a few months from now. And, uh, you know, if you want for investment purposes, with you know, which the stock market is not doing very well, and you want to invest in other, uh, you know, other other things to invest in you want to you, you like the sport you like baseball so you know you, you can't you know take a shot on baseball cards vintage baseball cards and you know go after some of these cards that i just mentioned so you know met, met fans um met fans that love the the team 73 top sellers it because of their uh success that year and also uh i i tell you one thing if you if you like the uh the history of the game and you want to uh, gamble, you have some, if you have some money to spend and want to gamble, you also want to never ignore the uh, pre-1950 cards. The pre-1950 cards, as I mentioned here in my past shows, are the uh, creme de la creme of the hobby, anything before 1950. And we all know that the Topps company the Tops Company, which originated in Brooklyn, New York, uh, they began their most popular series set with the 1952 Tops cards. The 52 Tops cards were Tops' biggest set, which started really their popularity in this hobby. But, you know, for collecting fans that uh, for non-collecting fans that are listening to the program and don't really understand the history of baseball cards, and you know, you you you, you do like baseball, you do like the sport. Uh, give you a little history. Tops also produced, like as I mentioned, their most popular series, their most popular set was the 1952 top set. They made those in quantity, and that has the most popular post-war player card in that set, which is the 52 Tops Mickey Mantle rookie card. And that card has sold through the years as really, that's really the holy grail of 1950s and 1960 cards, is that 52 Tops Mickey Mantle card uh, because of Mantle's popularity, uh, not only in the game, but his popularity in this baseball card hobby, even during the 1990s. 
when Mantle, you know, late 80s, 1990s, when Mantle was signing autographs and he really made the hobby extremely, extremely popular in the 80s and, you know, early 90s Mantle. And the 52 Tops Mantle card is really the holy grail the holy grail of post-war baseball cards. But Topps really began in 1948. Topps began in 1948. They made a mini player card set. And not many people know. They think that 52 Topps was the first year that Topps originated. But no, they made cards in 48. And if you look online and you type in 1948 Topps baseball cards, you really see these mini size baseball cards issued by the Topps company out of Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York in 1948. And they were really small, mini size, brownish, sepia color type baseball cards. And they are sought after, believe it or not, collectors do like collect collecting the history of the Topps company. There's a lot of collectors around the country that are called a uh, type card collectors, meaning they collect different type of baseball cards from various years, various brands. And the 48 Tops is really what I call an oddball mini card set. So it's really a type card collected series, the 48 Tops baseball cards. And then in 49, Tops really didn't make uh, baseball cards because in 49, the company Bowman, Bowman got into the mix and really Bowman got into the mix in 48. So the 48 Bowmans, which is another card company, got into the mix, as I mentioned, in 48, where Topps had these mini sepia color oddball type cards. The 48 Bowmans, in my opinion, really had the hobby controlled in 48, 49, 50. They produced, Bowman really produced uh, large player card sets, meaning in quantity, there were small baseball cards produced by Bowman, but they produced it in quantity. So Bowman really had the card market, the card hobby, I would say, you know, really was the popular company in 48, 49, 50, 51. Those four years, 48, 49, 50, 51, those four years, Bowman really ran the hobby. And kids back in 48, 49, 50 who would go to their candy stores and were baseball fans and collected baseball cards, they would see packs of Bowman. They wouldn't see packs of Tops because Tops really didn't produce mass quantity back then besides those 48 mini sepia baseball cards they produced. And then I guess with the uh, popularity of Bowman and so many kids collecting Bowman cards back in 48, 49, 50, 51, even 52, 52 Bowman. And, and, and you know, Bowman, they produced beautiful cards. I'm not saying the cards, if, if I was going to collect Bowman cards and, you know, compared to Tops, both cards are beautiful. Uh, Bowman cards are gorgeous, especially the late 40 Bowman cards, the 48, 49, 50, 51, beautiful cards. But Topps really saw that Bowman was generating money and uh, from producing these uh, cards, and they were so popular that Topps got into the game and really produced their uh, major set in 1952. And really, that's what it was. It was always Bowman and Topps. Uh, Bowman for started in 48. And Topps started in 48, but not as popular as Bowman. And then really in 52 is when Topps produced th that beautiful set. If you look it up for non-card collectors listening to the program, uh, just look up 1952 Topps baseball cards, and they're gorgeous cards. They're gorgeous cards, and they really, uh, with that set that Topps produced in 52, really, really took over the hobby, 52, 53, 54, and so on. And the rest is history. And then Bowman really got put in the back burner because tops really control the hobby. And, um, and then in the sixties, Fleer got involved. I mean, Fleer got involved in the sixties with uh, producing that, that 59 Fleer Ted Williams set 
Ted Williams, popular player, 59 Fleer produced the Fleer Company out of Philadelphia. And we had the first baseball car dealer, Bruce Yeko, on in my past show. And he mentioned on this program how back in the uh, late 50s, early 60s, he got a tour because he was one of the first baseball car dealers of all time. Can you imagine that? He got a tour. Uh, a private tour of the Fleer Company back in the late 50s, early 60s, Bruce Yeko. So Fleer started getting involved, and Fleer lasted you know, many decades after that. So really, Fleer got involved with that 59 Fleer Ted Williams set. They produced a set featuring the great Ted Williams in 59. And then Fleer also produced baseball cards not only in 59 – with the popularity of the uh, 59 Fleer Ted Williams set, Fleer continued producing a 1960 Fleer set, a 1961 Fleer set, and a 63 Fleer set. So Fleer got into the mix, and really that's how these card companies originated, came into existence. You had Bowman, you had Topps, Fleer. But Topps has always been the uh, the prime player in this hobby. Topps, because the way they produced the cards back in the early 50s and 60s, and also they had these contracts with these ball players in volume. So it was really the Topps company that uh, is really what made this hobby as popular as it is today, and and of course, Topps is no longer in Brooklyn. They're now in New York City and Manhattan, and they still stand. And now, from what I have been reading, is Topps is, has been getting into the di- digital age, uh, producing apps, showing a you know showing their baseball cards through the years. So they're really trying to invent, reinvent themselves in this digital age. So Topps has always been the prime seller in the hobby, and that's why most of these record-breaking prices through what really made this hobby popular in the 19, you know, late 70s, early 80s, where this hobby extremely, extremely really took off, and it was basically because of the Topps company. So, um, you know, if you haven't taken a look at the 2020 Topps baseball cards, 2020 Topps baseball cards, you know, as I, I as you know, I'm more of a vintage card dealer. But if you if you happen to like these modern day ball players and you want to get involved in this hobby, take a look at the 2020 Topps baseball cards. 2020 Topps baseball cards are beautiful cards, and they, they they're reinventing themselves. They also Topps also included. Uh, in their 2020 series, what appears to look like cards that were made in 1985. If you look at the 1985 Topps baseball cards, they were gorgeous cards as well. But Topps is trying to reinvent themselves, bring in the 85 Topps design because of its popularity back in 1985. Topps is bringing their popularity design from 1985 back to the spectrum. Back to the spectrum of the hobby. So not only is Topps producing these apps for the digital age, they're bringing back, and I think it's a great and smart idea, they're really bringing back some of the way the older Topps baseball car designs were. Because the hobby was extremely, extremely popular in 85, 86, 87, 88 89. The hobby was really, really going through the roof. Car conventions, and you can look this up. You may be able to find some videos of baseball card conventions back in the mid 1980s and baseball card shops back in the mid 1980s. They were jam packed with collectors back then. You couldn't even walk a convention room without bumping in to your fellow card collector. In the showroom, that's how mobbed and packed these card conventions were in 85, 86, 87, 88 because of the popularity not only of Topps, but because of the popularity of the design of the Topps baseball cards. So Topps, major role in this business, and it's such a great thing to see, and I'm very happy to say that Topps is reinventing themselves 
with their old designs. And if Topps is listening to this program, I would say stick to designs of the 80s because that's where this hobby was flourishing. That's where this hobby was flourishing because of the designs. 85, 86, 87, 88. So Topps is doing a great job in the digital age and reinventing themselves with these designs. So getting back to vintage cards, pre-1950 cards, the creme de la creme of the hobby, if you like to be a collector that not only collects tops baseball cards, then you're considered a type collector or collectors are considered type collectors when they collect different brands. So as I mentioned, Bowman, great uh, company to invest in pre-1950 cards, the 48 Bowman, the first year Bowman. You have, you know, yeah, Kiner, Ralph Kiner's rookie. There's so many good plays in that set. It's a small set, 48, 49 cards, I believe. It's a small set, but, you know, black and white set, 48 Bowman, Ralph Kiner, popular card. Warren Spahn was also in the 48 set, the great Warren Spahn. Also a popular card, and if you find that card, a 48 Bowman Warren Spawn, if you find it in nice shape, that's also another popular card. So keep in mind these players and years that I'm mentioning here that I throw out every so often during this conversation here. I just threw out a Ralph Kiner card, 48, good investment. If you find one, buy one. Nice shape, get it graded, you'll make some money. 48 Bowman Kiner, 48 Bowman Spawn, two great cards. To invest in. You also have Stan Musial, 48 Bowman Stan Musial. Excellent card, very expensive card, the 48 Bowman Stan Musial card, uh, if you find one in high grade. So you had Spawn, Kiner, Musial in the 48 set. 49 set, another beautiful card. They're very colorful. The 49 Bowman cards, also small cards, very colorful. You have Campanella. Roy Campanella, the great Brooklyn Dodger, extremely popular in the 49 Bowman series. You find one in any condition, 49 Bowman can't be, sells extremely well for me, sells extremely well for the Card King. And it's in any condition. I Through the years, I've had 49 Bowman campies beat up, corners missing, back damage. And I was able to get close to $200 for that card. 49 Bowman Campy, extremely popular seller, any condition. 50 Bowman, not as be- for me, not as pretty as the 49 Bowman. If I was going to compare 48, 49, 50 Bowmans, because those they, they were printed in similar size, they were small square cards printed in similar size. The 49 Bowman are out of the three years, 48, 49, 50, 49 Bowman, ha- for me, has always been the more popular year out of those three issues. Because in 49, the cards were more colorful. And 49, more colorful, and the cards were, of course, there was more, 48 Bowman were, was a limited produced set. Only 48 cards, I believe. 49 Bowman, they produced it in more quantity to complete the set because of the popularity from 48. So 49 Bowmans out of the three years, 49 Bowmans have always been top sellers for me. Now, the 51 and 52s, uh, you know, I'm not that crazy about them because, as I mentioned, 52, you know, they were made in larger um dimension size than the 48, 49, 50, 51s and 52s were produced in, in, in larger size form. But then 52 really is when the Topps company produced those gorgeous, colorful cards and, uh, and, and, and mantle and, and mantle really, uh, you know, was included in that set. And if you look at that 52 Topps mantle card, that card is just beautiful. And really it just took off of there. So really Bowman was not able to compete. And uh, 52 Tops, high numbers, also a popular seller. We, t- we spoke about that here on this show in the past. The 52 Tops, high numbers are sought after because they were issued by the Tops company in limited quantity. And uh, the 52 Tops, high numbers really, really sell through the roof in any condition. So it, it, through your travels, as I mentioned, uh, 
uh, National Sports Collectors Convention is approaching in a few months. So if you want to get involved in this hobby, I would recommend that you, uh, you, you, you make plans to attend the National Sports Collectors Convention. And there will be a lot of um, not only baseball cards and memorabilia to uh, purchase. There will also be uh, players signing autographs at the show. So you can bring uh, pieces of memorabilia from your own collection and pay a fee and have the uh, signers sign your item. So it's really a good way to get involved in this hobby if you're looking to invest and you're so weary and scared of the stock market that has been horrible the last three, four weeks, and you want to invest in a fun, in a fun way in which you can flip and make some money online, I would recommend you attend this National Sports Collectors Convention this year. And I can get you the dates. I, I'm running out of time. I can get you the dates on next week's show. It's usually held in August, July. In the past, it's been held July, August. I think this is held in August, but I'll get you the exact dates next week. It's a shame my, my caller didn't call in. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if we can reschedule. Um, until next week, I thank everyone for tuning in. Happy collecting to all.